Hey there Pop-Tarts. Recently I've been thinking about the beauty and the value of consistency in spiritual practice and I've been thinking about how the role of consistency factors into my own spiritual practice at this point, what my relationship with consistency and commitment have been like in spiritual practice, why consistency is important and I've also been thinking about how many people throughout the time that I've been putting my own ideas out there online have approached me and told me that they have an issue with consistency, that they really struggle to continue with what they've started and to keep their commitments to their spiritual journeys. And this is particularly true when it comes to deciding to focus on a practice and do so you know, daily or weekly and actually really give yourself to it. I know that a number of people have gotten in touch with me over the years to say that they really struggle with that. And there's a lot of starting strong and then kind of fizzling out you know so there's a lot of, of beginning with this really good intention and a really clear reason behind that intention and a, a really strong desire to just totally do this and commit to it and, and show that discipline and then it dissipates you know that really strong emotion that is first brought to the plan dissipates and kind of fizzles out and a lot of people are left feeling really underwhelmed by the decisions that they made and the commitments that they held fast to because over a number of days or after the first couple of weeks it's like the shine just fades and the desire peters out and then a lot of people find themselves going back to the drawing board a few months down the line thinking, why couldn't I stick to that spiritual practice? Why did I struggle to keep that commitment? What was the problem there? And I suppose what this video is all about is just going through a few things that I've learned over time about the value of consistency in spiritual practice and just try, kind of trying to put forth some tools and talk from my own experience about why it's important and what it is that seems to get in the way of it and how we can move through that. A lot of the people that watch my YouTube channel are solitary practitioners of some form of alternative spirituality. Um, a lot of people that watch my channel are eclectic witches, a lot are eclectic pagans, um, there are some that hold more of an idea of what they believe theologically but they don't necessarily hold firm to an orthopraxy. So they might be naturalistic pantheists for example or something like that but they might not necessarily have a strict set of activities or celebrations that they mark on the turning year or anything like that. Um, there are a lot of kind of like garden variety pagans that just honour the earth and do what they can for the planet and kind of you know they're that more earth-based pagan spirituality but again they might not necessarily do rituals or, or necessarily um, cast spells or refer to themselves as witches. There are a lot of people that watch my channel that um, are just really focused on meditation and focused on reflection and, and contemplating life's mysteries and life's wonders but might not necessarily choose a label for that. So there are all kinds of different people watching and I know that I also do have some Christians watching and some Muslims watching and some straight up atheists that don't have any spiritual practice watching as well. So. I'm going to I'm going to talk now from my own experience about the beauty of setting something up that you do regularly and why that might be necessary and one thing that I will say about some of the people that watch me is that I know that some people that are audience members of mine are actually in covens or they're in some kind of spiritual group. They meet together either online or in the physical with other people who share to a degree their spiritual beliefs and together an orthopraxy is formed and adhered to. And that can definitely be a really useful thing for people that struggle with consistency or for people that really feel that they want to hold fast to their spiritual commitments and may struggle to do so on their own. When you've got the group accountability of a coven or a spiritual kind of team that you're part of, um, then I think it really helps you to be able to move ahead with, with consistency and actually see the, the benefits, the payoff from that consistency. But a lot of people that follow my channel, and I know me myself as well, they're solitary practitioners. So it's about setting up your own curriculum of things that you want to study. It's about setting up your own plan of what you're going to be doing at your altar space or what you're going to be doing on the wheel of the year. It's about making commitments and holding firm to them on your own without having that group accountability or that public accountability. And that can definitely be something that a lot of people struggle with. When left to our own devices, we definitely have the opportunity to just drop our spiritual commitments and really not give ourselves to those commitments. Nobody's really looking, okay? Nobody's checking for us. Nobody's checking to make sure that we are um, 
marking the turns on the wheel of the year or that we are engaging in ritual or that we are engaging in spiritual study you know nobody's checking up on us we're not going to have to fill out a written exam at the end of the academic year we don't have a group that we meet with that we do rituals with so really it's down to us you know and being a solitary practitioner that can be difficult at times especially if you're going through challenges in your life if your schedule is really jam-packed with stuff if you have a lot of commitments at work or if you have mental health issues that you're dealing with you're going through maybe the ups and downs of depression or you know a kind of cyclical mental health disorder something like that anything like that chronic pain any of that stuff financial issues whatever you're going through in your life that could take away your energy and attention from the spiritual journey and from spiritual practice when you're going through that you don't really have anything to bring you back to the path you have to bring yourself back to the path and that is part of the um, it's part of the kind of disadvantage of being solitary, solitary, but it's also in a lot of ways part of the power and potency of being solitary because you really, you really find that it builds character and it builds resilience and it builds a sense of what you can really accomplish. I know that for me, um, when I'm being really consistent in my spiritual practice, when I keep showing up, even when I'm convinced that I don't have time or when I'm telling myself there's something else I should be doing, if I keep going to my altar, if I keep plugging away, if I keep doing what I set out to do and I maintain my spiritual studies and stuff, I feel really accomplished precisely because nobody is forcing my hand nobody is twisting my arm, nobody is, is checking for me and making sure that I do it. It's me making that commitment for myself. It's me deciding that that's what I need to be doing. And there's a maturity in that. And there's something to honour about that. You know, when I find myself being able to do that despite my challenges and despite the fullness of my external life, that's a really amazing thing. And it's something that I can commend myself for. There have been times in my life with my practice where I have wondered if spiritual practice itself is a form of preparation. I have often gone to my altar and gone through the motions of ritual at the new moon or at the full moon, um, or I have gone to perform meditation and I've thought to myself, I feel like I don't need this right now. I feel like this is not necessary for me right now, but somehow I'm doing it anyway. I'm going through the motions. I'm strengthening that sense of consistency and commitment that I have to my spiritual journey. And at times like that, it feels like preparation. It feels like if I meditate every single day or if I pull cards every day or if I go through my prayer beads every day, even when I feel I don't need to, even when I feel strong, even when things are going okay for me, then that feels like a form of preparation. It feels like I am preparing myself for the key moments in life where I may really, really need all of the strength that I've built from doing daily practice. Um, the moment in life where I find out that somebody that I love dearly has died, has passed on, is no longer in the earthly realm. Or the moment in my life where I may find out that I am dying, that something inside my body is eating me and that it's terminal and I only have a certain amount of time left on planet. I'm preparing for times when I may be betrayed. I'm preparing for times when I may be attacked. I'm preparing for times of loneliness. I'm preparing for the next bout of depression that's gonna come along. I'm preparing for those challenging days, those tough times, those problems that blindside me out of nowhere when I was least expecting them. It's like if I maintain that sense of spiritual consistency and I come to my practice in good faith every single day, even when I feel I don't need to, even when things are going well, even when I feel tremendously plugged in anyway, if I keep coming back to it, if I keep giving myself to it daily, it's like I'm doing that as a form of preparation. I'm doing that as if to recognise that every single time I give myself to spiritual practice, I strengthen the core, I build that strong foundation. And then when I really need to be in my core and when I really need to feel the strength of that foundation, it's there for me. And that's, for me, the beauty of consistency in my own spiritual journey is that if I am consistent, if I come to it every day, if I remind myself every morning of who I am, of what I am, uh, that I'm a witch, for example, and the power that that holds, if I do something about that, if I keep giving myself to it, then it's like I'm preparing myself every single day for the most difficult times in my life, for the most challenging times in my life, for the things that are gonna come up that are really going to test me for the days that are gonna come up when I can't meditate, when I don't have time, when I don't have the inclination, when depression has got me by the throat. 
then all of the days that I spent doing my spiritual practice and giving myself to it, those days will help me to get through the darkest times and the toughest times when I really can't give myself to spiritual practice or when something has happened that has really shocked me or has really tested me or has really made me feel blue. I often think of consistency in spiritual practice as a form of preparation for some of the most difficult times in my life and even though they're over the horizon and I don't know when they're coming along and I don't know what they're going to consist of, I know that having a regular spiritual practice builds that foundation that I need when the tower starts to crumble. For me, when I look at the tower card, I often talk about how the firm foundation beneath the tower is what really matters. You know, relationships end, people die, things move on, unexpected change comes out of nowhere, we fuck up, we fail, we make mistakes, we don't always behave as the best version of ourselves, we do have to watch things crumble sometimes, things that we have built, things that we've given our love to, things that we've sweated over, things that we have cried over, we have to watch those things leave, we have to we have to say goodbye to those things whether we want to or not but that that ground underneath the crumbling tower that is what is left and that is what we don't spend enough time thinking about and to me daily spiritual practice regular spiritual contemplation that is the ground beneath the tower if the tower starts to crumble if lightning hits that motherfucker i know that the ground beneath it is strong and that's why I go to my altar. And that is why I keep this shit moving. That is why it's so important to me to keep showing up, to keep doing it, to keep giving myself to it and dedicating myself to it. Often I do feel like it's a form of preparation for the time when that lightning bolt comes. And like I said, I don't know when it's gonna come. I don't know how it's gonna come or the manner of how things are gonna progress from there. But knowing that I have given myself to daily spiritual contemplation is knowing that the ground is solid that I haven't built this thing on a swamp and that if everything goes to shit and I'm down at, at you know at ground zero again I can clear the debris and I can I can begin I can start over being a solitary practitioner and giving myself to a consistent spiritual practice is also a form of discipline and it is an example for myself in my external life of my ability to be disciplined, my ability to be present, my ability to keep going with something despite feeling challenged, despite feeling time poor, despite feeling like I might rather do something else with my time. Sometimes I do need to push myself to go to the altar. I do need to push myself to do the spiritual study that I've committed to. I do need to push myself sometimes to do ritual. I don't always go gladly. I don't always dance carefree towards my altar and you know, give myself fully to something and absolutely enjoy it and relish it every time. No, there is an element of discipline to it. I do sometimes feel like copping out and not doing it. And there have definitely been times where my spiritual practice has dried up because exactly because of that, because I've let that mentality um, rule me. I've let that sense of laziness or that sense of stagnation write the script for me. And I've had to come back to the path, you know, I've had to re-enter that sense of, of dedication to spiritual practice. When I show myself that I can have the commitment to keep coming every single day to spiritual practice, to keep doing what I set out to do, to keep doing what I said I was gonna do, that's huge for me. It shows me that I have accountability to myself. It shows me that I have the discipline. It shows me that I have the perseverance to keep going. For me, if you're part of a coven, if you're part of a spiritual group, if you have some kind of public group accountability and that helps you to be consistent, then I think that's absolutely amazing and I would never take anything away from that. But for me personally, showing myself that I've got the discipline to keep coming to the practice, even though nobody is looking, even though nobody is checking for me, even though nobody else needs me to be present for a group ritual, the fact that I'm still coming to the practice is a big deal for me. It shows shows me that I have that discipline, it shows me that I am dedicated to my own journey and that I can keep doing something even though I don't always feel immensely moved to do it. I can keep doing something because it's good for me. I can keep doing it because I said I was going to do it and because it matters even if I'm not always in the mood to do it and that is adulting, do you know what I mean? That is basically 
being an adult, that's taking spiritual responsibility, that's doing what I set out to do. And that can have a ripple effect, that goes out into other aspects of my life as well. It shows me that I'm capable of doing that in other areas, you know, it shows me that I'm capable of saving money, I'm capable of keeping my social engagements with people, I'm capable of making a difference out there in the external world. All of that starts with my ability to be accountable to going to my altar and doing this shit, you know, absolutely continuing with it. Um, sometimes I don't want to do that, but I do that anyway, and that's being spiritually sophisticated, that's being spiritually mature. Maintaining a consistent spiritual practice is undoubtedly a form of self-love. I feel like for me it's one of the most sacred forms of self-love. It's absolutely giving myself something that is so essential and so effectual in my life, and sometimes it really feels like a deep form of revolution to show myself that if I'm consistent with my spiritual practice, great boons come from that, you know, wonderful benefits come from that. And so when I look at it overall, that's a huge part of what it means to love myself, is to keep giving that to myself. And I've proved to myself over time that when I'm consistent in a spiritual practice, even if it morphs a little bit and evolves a little bit over time, the consistency itself gives me so many benefits, there are so many pros to that consistency and the more that I continue day after day to give myself to it, the more heightened those benefits are and the more obvious they are, they show up in my external life. And conversely, I've also shown myself through a number of different spiritual slumps that when I stop doing things, when I stop engaging in spiritual activity, there are downfalls to that. There are definitely negative effects that come from ignoring my spiritual practice, from not engaging in spiritual activities. I definitely suffer as a result of that. So giving myself to a spiritual practice consistently and not losing my way um, is a form of self-love. It's basically it's recognising the evidence that I've seen over time that spiritual practice is important for my well-being. It's important for my mood. It's important for my sense of who I am as a human being. So whenever I do stray from the path, whenever I do go into a bit of a slump, I pull myself out of it quickly and get myself back on the path to daily spiritual contemplation, daily spiritual practice, because I know that it helps. It's undeniable. There's, a, it, there's evidence. If I look back over the course of my life for the entire time that I've been a witch, that I've been spiritual, that I have meditated, that I've done ritual, that I've had an altar, if I look back over all of that time on the timeline, I know that the periods of my life where I've had a slump spiritually and where I haven't recognised my spirituality, those periods of time have been problematic. The lack of spiritual practice has added to whatever problems I've had during those times in my life. And that is undeniable. There's no way that I can deny that. The evidence is there. Spiritual practice, which is consistent, actually gives something to me. It actually is incredibly positive for me. It helps me to deal with the problems that come along in my life. It helps me to, um, to access my strength when challenges come into view. Regular spiritual practice helps me to face a lot of the challenges that are going on in the outside world. It helps me to be a more conscientious human being. It helps me to give myself more to my clients, to be more empathetic towards my friends, to understand people more, to react in a less um, kind of headstrong, reckless way, and to react in more of a conscious way, to think before I speak to contemplate deeply before I take any irreversible action. When I'm giving myself to a consistent spiritual practice, especially on a daily basis, I find that what I'm doing is I'm accessing the strength in the core of me, and I'm doing that before I do anything else. So if I spend time at the altar before I go outside, then I know that I'm going to feel shielded and my aura is going to be where I want it to be. I know that energetically I'm carrying the right things out into the world. I'm looking at things through the right lens. I'm giving a sense of perspective and strength to every situation that I walk into. And that is so much better than not doing any spiritual practice and feeling like I'm kind of walking around without a sense of my centre. I'm walking around without a sense of strength in the core and I don't like that. And that's why I keep coming to daily spiritual practice is because it does make me a better human being. It does enable me to 
fight the good fight more and it helps me to respond to things in a way that I feel is in alignment with my highest good and is in alignment with my core principles. When I'm not practicing spirituality on the regular, I really fall down with that kind of thing. I find myself responding in ways which are not in alignment with my with my highest good and with my higher self. I find myself making decisions which don't reflect my principles. I find myself feeling unable to take my challenges in hand and I don't feel like my vibration is where I want it to be. I don't feel like I've got my energetic framework set up as I want it to be set up and that can be a huge problem. It means that I start to take on other people's shit. It means that I feel very weak. I feel very vulnerable. I feel as though I can't really interact with people in, in the way that I want to. So spiritual practice gives me that fortitude that I need to face the day and to be the best version of myself on any given day. Again, I definitely have evidence for this as well. This is something that I can look at over the timeline of my life and I can see that when I have been dedicated in my spiritual practice and when I've been coming to it regularly, I have been a more decent human being. I've been better to be around. I've been less prone to angry snapping and rages or passive aggression. I've been more open and communicative with people, but I've also been better at holding my own boundaries firm. You know, all of these things I can see um, as evidence for the importance of, of regular spiritual practice. I can see that when I have that regular spiritual practice, I'm a more decent human being and I can use my strength in the service of, of the bigger picture, you know, and I can be good to people and I can be good to me. And so it's a huge tool and it's very important, not only for myself, but for the people that I have relationships with in life and for the clients that I serve. A lot of people get really hung up on what they are doing with their spiritual practice. A lot of people say that they struggle with consistency because they decide that they're gonna do a particular thing every single day. And then after a couple of days, they think to themselves, well, why am I doing this? Why would I choose this? Why wouldn't I also choose this? So for example, somebody might decide that they're going to set up a daily practice of meditation and then the kind of the shine of that idea will kind of fade and become dull and that person will start to think, well, maybe I should be doing daily draws or maybe I should be doing mantras or maybe I should do this or maybe I should give myself to journaling daily. You know, maybe meditation isn't the right thing for me. So then they'll go off and they'll engage in another spiritual practice which they fully intend to be a consistent daily practice. But then that will lose its shine after a certain amount of time as well. And I know that this is something that people really struggle with is they start strong and they're like, yeah, absolutely, this is what I'm gonna be doing and I'm gonna I'm gonna see a world of difference and a host of benefits from doing this. And then before very long, they're, they're, they've fallen off the wagon, basically. And I would definitely say that with spiritual practice, it's sometimes important to adopt the archetype of the scientist. Sometimes it's not really about what you're doing. It's about the fact that you're doing something. It's actually about the consistency itself far more than it is about what you are doing on a consistent basis. So for me, I've actually learned that it doesn't actually matter what mantra I'm using or what meditation technique I'm using or what kind of deck I decide I'm gonna work with, for example, for a month of daily draws for myself. It doesn't matter what writing exercise I'm using, what ritual I'm doing. It doesn't even matter which deity I'm addressing. What matters is that I stay the course for a certain amount of time and I keep it consistent and I keep it moving. There's a lot of dialogue nowadays about the fact that you have to do a practice every single day for 30 days at least before you see any discernible benefits, before you can actually look at your life and see the tangible evidence of the advantages of what you've been doing. And I definitely would say that I have had experience with that as well. I have certainly um, noticed that when I'm consistent with something for a period of 30 days or more, that's where I start to see the payoff. If I start to question before that 30 day period what I'm doing and whether or not it's of benefit, then the dialogue I'm having with myself in my head, it's null and void. I don't need to be having that conversation with myself. I'm not going to be able to see necessarily any firm positive results after doing something for five or six days. That's it's. I need to continue with it. The consistency is a key part of it. The consistency sometimes is more important than what you are doing. We overthink so much. We overthink it, you know, we overcook it in our minds until it's burnt black. <laughs> we don't need to do that. I think this is something that a lot of my clients have spoken with me about when it comes to spiritual study in particular. I know that so many people are really eager to just learn 
everything they can learn about spiritual topics and we have so many different things that we want to learn and that often keeps us on the sidelines mulling over and rethinking what it is that we really want to be doing with our time as spiritual students. Lots of people say that they start on a process of learning astrology but then they think well I really want to learn Kabbalah as well and I really want to learn this and I really want to look at the Hermetic tradition and I really I really want to look over here but, but I want to go there as well and actually what happens is that another year goes by of us not actually dedicating ourselves fully to an area of spiritual study it means that we always remain generalists um, and there's nothing wrong with being a generalist but many of us want to start to specialize in things many of us want to reach that next plateau with our understanding of certain subjects but so many of us keep ourselves locked on the sidelines by telling ourselves that there's this wealth of different things we want to learn and we can't give ourselves overly to all of them so we end up just not really giving ourselves to any of them and we remain in this sense of, of not having enough information on anything we second guess what we commit ourselves to and you know my feeling is this choose something and stick with it for an agreed period of time you know just decide that you are going to study that thing and you are going to give yourself to that study for six weeks or eight weeks whatever it is mark it out on a calendar if that helps you and just decide that you're going to look at that particular thing to the detriment of everything else for a certain amount of time after that time if you want to reassess and decide whether or not it's still working for you then you can do that but for that set period of time that is what you're going to study no second guessing no excuses and I guarantee you that once you've decided that and you're dedicated to that the consistency is going to give you so much even if you don't carry on after that agreed time period the fact that you've decided to focus on this thing to the detriment of everything else is good that is a good thing you will start to see your ability to be disciplined and to be committed to what you're doing and that will really really be so heartening it will help you to see the strength that you really have and the ability that you have to adult your way through your life as a spiritual seeker and it's mesmerizing to see yourself accomplish that so don't don't you know refuse to give that to yourself don't withhold that sense of accomplishment from yourself allow yourself to have that i think that is so important instead of over analyzing and picking everything apart and going back to the drawing board constantly and never really getting that sense of flow and consistency forget all of that just choose to do something every single day you could choose a mantra and it could be any mantra it could be om mani padme hum it could be rama dasa it could be you know uh, anything any any mantra just choose one look at the meaning of it fine but don't overdo the meaning of it don't hash and rehash you know the importance of the meaning of it just pick a mantra and agree with yourself that you're going to chant that mantra every single day for a month just to see what happens just out of curiosity just as a form of experimentation it doesn't need to be that serious it really can just be a case of you wanting to get back into the groove if you're going through a spiritual slump or you really struggle with consistency or you're overthinking what you need to be doing in your practice I would say scrap that and just choose to do something choose to do something every single day for a certain amount of time and what you'll find is that you will slip into a flow and you will show yourself that even on the days when you don't feel moved to do something you can push yourself to do it you can get yourself into it and I think that's part of what spiritual maturity is all about is going to something and doing something even if you don't feel called to do it there are many times when I've gone through the motions or when I've sat at my altar and I haven't even really known what I'm there for I haven't really known what I want to do I just know that it's important for me to get myself to sit there it's important for me to just be there and after a while it becomes clear what I should be doing and I either pick up the prayer beads and I go through the prayer beads or I do a devotional or an offering you know or I do some kind of ritual or I meditate or I, I do some some release work whatever it becomes clear to me what I should be doing once I'm there but a lot of the time when I'm going through a slump when I'm struggling to create that consistency just going and sitting there is the important thing just knowing that I need to move myself to do it, I need to push myself out of the slump, I've got to give myself that sacred time to be 
in the essence of who I am in spirituality and sometimes just sitting at the altar is the first step if I can get there then the rest is going to come the rest is going to fold out as it needs to fold out but first of all I need to just sit there and it does take for me to twist my own arm to gently kind of say to myself hey you know you need to go and be in spiritual practice you've got to go do it even though you don't feel like doing it because it's when you don't feel like doing it that you really need to be fucking doing it so just go and do it I challenge you to take some time in the coming days to think about how consistency has been useful for you in your life. How has consistency brought you back to a sense of your own capability and to a sense of your own strength and to a sense of what you're really made of and what you can really achieve and what you can really experience in this life. I know that for me, consistency has been a really important theme. When I show myself that I can be accountable for myself and accountable for my experience on this earth, it's a big deal, it's a really important thing. Like I said, sometimes it doesn't really matter what you're doing, it matters that you're doing something. So if you're listening to this and you know that you're going through a slump at the moment, then I really would recommend just letting go of any of the hang-ups and the overthinking that you're doing and just start with something nice and easy that you can do daily that only takes five or ten minutes at the most that can allow you to get back into the flow there's so much to be said for the building blocks of daily practice on top of daily practice on top of daily practice it really does generate something so incredible it gives you an incredible amount of fortitude and sometimes you may not really know exactly why you're doing it and sometimes you may just want to do something else instead you might not always feel the passion to go and do this daily thing that you said you were going to do but I would definitely recommend it and likewise you know daily practice is not for everybody and daily practice is not for me all of the time but I know when I need it and I know when I need to be committed to it and you know there are definitely times in my life where I've gone through months and months and months of, of daily practice rigorous daily practice because I know that it's what I need is it always what I want to do no do I sometimes need to pull myself to do that practice like pull myself towards the altar and sit myself there Yes, absolutely. I need to bring out the archetype of the stern parent. I need to talk to myself. I need to say, hey, this is what you need. This is what you need. Give it to yourself. You know, it's like eating spinach. It's just like, so, you know, you might not always want to. You might want that glazed donut instead. But it's, it's about like, you know, it's about drinking water instead of drinking soda. It's, it's really just saying to yourself, hey, you know what? You'll feel better afterwards. You know, it, you don't have to think that you're the only person that sometimes doesn't feel like they want to give themselves to spiritual practice. Don't think that everybody else is just like, you know, stretching in the morning and going, ah, my altar, you know, I'm going to do a devotional and an hour long meditation. And I'll, you know, like, it, it's not like that for everybody all the time. Everybody goes through times where they really do want to check out of doing of doing the practice and doing the work everybody has times in their life where they don't really feel like it but it's at that time when you can really show yourself your own spiritual maturity where you can say i'm going to keep to this commitment because i know it's good for me and i know that even though i can't see the immediate reasons why i'm doing it right now I will know later on that the reason for doing it will become clear to me. There's something over the horizon that I need to be fortified for and daily spiritual practice will give me that fortitude. It will give me that strength in the core. And so even though I feel like I would rather do something else right now, I'm going to go and do this because I know that there is a reason. I know that it makes me a better human. I know that it is part of my self-love routine. I know it's going to help me to face the day and help me to face my challenges. And it's important that I honour this journey it's important that i honor my deities that i honor divinity that i honor the spark of divinity within me you know tell yourself that sometimes when you are struggling with consistency and don't tell yourself you're the only person that struggles we all struggle from time to time we always want to we all want to check out you know from time to time but you just got to stay with yourself you just got to keep reminding yourself of your pure intentions and why it's important to keep going on this journey I really hope that these thoughts have been useful to you and that I've managed to hold your hand from one spiritual seeker to another and impart some guidance that could be inspiring to you if you need it right now. Much love, until next time, blessed be.